Charlie Shrem, the uh, former CEO of BitInstant and the former vice chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation. Charlie Shrem has reached a plea deal uh, with the U.S. government to um, reduce his original charges. Um, he was originally, originally charged with money laundering um, and, and, you know, conspiracy to you know, commit money laundering and, and operating an unlicensed money transmitter. So he's gotten his charges reduced to just unli unlicensed uh, money transmission. And it looks like he may be able to uh, go free. He won't necessarily get jail time um, based on that one charge. But it's it's up to the judge to decide. Um, so, like, I didn't know that much about um, Charlie Shrem's case before this week. And I kind of went back and, like, read up on basically what they charged him with and why. And... Um, but basically, he was he was tangentially he was allegedly tangentially in, involved with the Silk Road online illicit marketplace, um, where he he was accused of facilitating over a million dollars worth of 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 Bitcoin and selling it to people who wanted to use it to buy drugs off of Silk Road. So um, that's what he was accused of, and he was arrested in January, and um, he was under house arrest basically up, in, up until this point, although he was able to have um, uh, basically 12 hours a day starting in May. He was allowed to leave his house for 12 hours a day and, you know, do whatever. So it was like partial house arrest, I guess. Um, but at this point, um, they've made a lot of progress and they've reached an agreement. He will plead guilty to, uh, operating an unli unlicensed money transmitter. Um, no conspiracy charges, no money laundering charges, but the same can't necessarily be said for his, uh, his co-defendant, Robert Fiella, um, who was more allegedly more deeply involved in Silk Road who he supposedly ran his own storefront on Silk Road uh, for selling bitcoins to people who who wanted to transact with, with drugs and illicit goods on Silk Road. So he actually ran like like an actual like Silk Road like storefront, um, and Shrem did not. So that you know, it's we don't know yet if Fiella is is um, also going to reach a plea deal, or if he's going to stand trial on September twenty second. Um, for what the government accuses him, him of doing, but um, this is good news. This is progress for for Charlie Shrem. This is this is progress for the um, community as a whole in relation to like criminal laws. Because um, with the earlier charges that Charlie Shrem was faced with, he was facing up to thirty years in prison, max, for um, the previous three charges, and now it's dropped to five years max, and. Most analysts are hoping, or actually predicting, that he might not get any jail time at all based on that one charge. So, progress, right? Yeah, it's good news for him. Um, could potentially be good news for uh, the Bitcoin community too, because this guy obviously did a lot before he got arrested. You know, he um, he ran BitInstant and was with the uh, Bitcoin Foundation, which does a lot you know wh whether or not you think what they do is is uh beneficial i mean they still do a lot in the big whether or not the results are beneficial or not yeah. but they had good aims yeah so um i mean what do you think he's gonna do now you think he's gonna go back to the foundation um or... you know i i doubt that i don't i don't think that he would go back to the foundation just because of all the all the controversy basically like that's the original reason he resigned from the Bitcoin Foundation is because um, that he didn't. It wasn't an admission of guilt, but he didn't want the controversy surrounding his case to like muddy up the the goals and the and the work of the foundation. Because if if like if such a high profile person in the foundation is dealing with all these legal troubles and you know all these accusations and stuff it can potentially reflect badly on the foundation itself because then they have to deal with like, you know, publicity issues and, you know, um, public perception of, of them. So like he, he, he did the right thing by just cutting himself off from it. And, 
you know, I, I don't, I don't see any reason for him to to want to go back to the Bitcoin Foundation, but I do think that like he's he will stay involved with Bitcoin. Um, I I think that he'll he'll get back to, back involved with the community and um and and keep keep working on you know Bitcoin related ventures. Maybe start up a new company like you know he started up bit instant which was one of the first like like bitcoin exchanges back in the early days of bitcoin and that was like that was revolutionary back then that was a that was a vital service for the community but now we have plenty of exchanges to service that need in the community so it'll be interesting interesting to see if he chooses something totally different that um that might provide more benefit for the community in like t in today's ecosystem